I'm going to guide you through from start to finish what you need to know to implement the risk management framework. Over this series, we're going to walk through security policy regulations and frameworks, RMF roles and responsibilities, risk analysis processes, steps one through six, categorize, select, implement, assess, authorize, and monitor. For those studying for the ISACA CAP exam, this content will suit your requirements. The exam itself is three hours, 125 multiple choice questions covering these domains, risk management framework, categorization of information systems, selection of security controls, security control implementation, security control assessment, information system authorization, and monitoring of security controls. In the first section, we're going to deal with a basic introduction. Uh, we're going to define some key terms and concepts that you need to know as you implement the risk management framework. When we're done, you'll be able to identify the important concepts of assurance, assessment, and authorization, list the three key characteristics of security, list the reasons for widespread change of the risk management framework, and define the security controls and list examples of at least three classes of controls. If you're studying for the ISC squared cap exam, this section will cover the basics of the exam and all the references covered in the current cap exam. So why RMF? Where did it start from and why is it important? Well, it all starts with FISMA, the Federal Information Security Management Act. Anything ending with ACT it's a law. Congress passed this law in 2002, mandating that all federal information systems must report back to them, or the office of OMB actually, uh, the security posture of their machines. The framework in which they'll report is the NIST Special Publication Series 800. Starting with NIST 837, it will walk you through the basics that you need to know to begin implementing the risk management framework in your environment. The Department of Defense issued, or actually reissued, DODI 8510.01. This publication rescinded DICAP and implements and references all further to the risk management framework. This instruction indicates that the risk management framework is to replace DICAP and manage the total life cycle of cybersecurity risk for all DOD IT systems. The risk management framework is composed of six core steps, categorize, select, implement, assess, authorize, and monitor. Throughout this series, we're going to walk one by one through each of the steps, ensuring that you have a full understanding of what's required in each. Before we can start, we need to understand some core terms, starting with assurance. When we talk about assurance, we're dealing with a degree of trust or confidence that the system is going to act and behave in a manner that is predictable. We need to be able to trust our systems. All protection mechanisms work to process sensitive data for many types of users and maintain the same level of protection. You should be familiar with what was initially introduced as the CIA triad, introducing the core concepts of security, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. We also need to take into account authentication and non-repudiation, authentic or authentication to make sure that it is real or the original, and non-repudiation, ensuring that I cannot deny doing whatever it is that I did is non-repudiation. 
When dealing with the risk management framework, everything is broken down into three classes of security controls. First, management controls. These are action taken to manage the development, maintenance, and use of the systems, like policies, procedures. Then operational controls, the day-to-day -day mechanisms of how we operate in a given environment. And then the technical controls. These are the blinky lights, the hardware and software controls, and how the devices are configured, such as you know, authentication mechanisms and encryption. When dealing with management controls, you'll see security authorization and security control assessments, planning, risk assessment, system services and acquisition, program management, audit, and human resources. The operational control families deal with awareness and training, configuration management, contingency planning and incident response, maintenance, media protection, physical and environmental protection, personnel security, and system and information integrity. And within the technical control family, altogether there are 59 controls represented in these four core families. Identification and authentication, access control, audit and accountability, and system and communications protection. You can clearly see the class represented in the first column, management, operational, or technical, the long name or the base name of the control family, and then the two-letter identifier. We'll get into more of that later. So why these families and why do we consider these controls to be comprehensive? Well, it all points back to defense and depth. In basic terms, is the successive layers that cause adversaries to have to break through one barrier and then immediately another and another until hopefully they've exhausted their resources and yet we have still protect the core asset. Next, let's talk about assessment. Assessment, the core definition given to us by NIST, is the testing and or evaluation of the management, operational, and technical security controls to determine the extent to which the controls are implemented correctly, operating as intended, and producing the desired outcome with respect to meeting the security requirements for an information system or organization. The short simply is make sure that it's doing what we think it's supposed to do and how it was designed to do it. Next, authorization. The core definition offered by NIST is the official management decision given by senior organizational officials to authorize operation of an information system and to explicitly accept the risk to organizational operation assets, individuals, other organizations, and the nation based on the implementation of an agreed upon set of security controls. In other words, after the assessment, someone has to say, I got it. In our next section, we will deal with some of the cybersecurity policies and core regulations. So I hit him with a dough. Now let me welcome everybody to the wild, wild west.